In the early 20th century, the Van der Meer family, Dutch settlers, claimed Monado as their home. Their mansion stood as a testament to their wealth and influence, a fortress of colonial power amidst the lush tropics. Jan, a stern and ambitious businessman, and his wife, Maria, the picture of refined elegance, were icons of colonial success. However, within the labyrinthine corridors of their opulent mansion, sinister shadows writhed and coiled, undetected and unheeded, hinting at an ominous presence lurking in the darkness. Their daughter, Annalise, a child of boundless curiosity and wild imagination, sensed the darkness that lurked within. She spoke of whispers echoing through the empty rooms and shadowy figures that danced just beyond the edge of sight. Her parents dismissed these tales as mere flights of fancy, the product of an overactive mind. But in the stillness of night, as the house sighed and groaned, Annalise felt the chill of unseen eyes upon her. Her journal entries, discovered years later, revealed a mind tormented by visions and voices, a child caught in the grip of something far beyond her understanding. As Annalise's accounts grew more vivid, the family's dismissive attitude shifted slightly. Maria began to notice subtle changes in the atmosphere of their home. Cold drafts that seemed to come from nowhere and the sensation of being watched. Jan, however, remained resolute, attributing these experiences to the stress of their colonial life. He insisted that they continue with their daily routines, unaware that each day brought them closer to a tragic event that would shatter their lives. The day Annalise vanished, the sun seemed to dim, casting the world in a pallor of foreboding. She had been playing in the garden, her laughter a bright melody against the backdrop of verdant greenery. But as twilight descended, her voice was swallowed by the gathering gloom. Jan and Maria's frantic search through the house and grounds yielded nothing but silence and shadows. The servants, too, joined in the desperate hunt, their faces etched with fear and confusion. Despair took hold of Maria, her eyes hollowed by sleepless nights and fruitless prayers. She began to hear the same whispers that had tormented her daughter, a susurrus of voices that slipped through the cracks of her sanity. Jan, ever the rationalist, struggled to comfort her, yet even he could not ignore the creeping dread that settled over their home. The once grand mansion, with its stately rooms and manicured gardens, became a prison of sorrow and fear. As days turned into weeks, hope dwindled. Maria's health deteriorated, her mind consumed by the inexplicable <laughs> loss of her child. Jan, though outwardly composed, felt the weight of guilt pressing down on him. He had failed to protect his family from an unseen menace, and the realization gnawed at his soul. The family's social circle began to distance themselves, whispering about curses and haunted spirits. Finally, unable to bear the anguish any longer, the Vandermeers made the painful decision to leave Monado. They returned to the Netherlands, abandoning their once prized mansion to the elements and whatever malevolent force resided within its walls. The house, once filled with laughter and light, stood silent a monument to loss and mystery. With the departure of the Van der Meers, the mansion stood silent, a testament to the tragedy that had befallen its residents. But it did not remain dormant for long. Local legends took root, tales of eerie cries piercing the night and spectral figures glimpsed through shattered windows. The house, once a symbol of prosperity, became a beacon of fear its grandeur consumed by decay. Locals spoke in hushed tones of the child's ghost, her mournful wails echoing through the darkened halls. Brave souls who ventured too close claimed to see fleeting shadows, feel an icy breath on the back of their necks. The mansion's aura of malevolence grew, fed by the terror it inspired. The once lush gardens became overgrown and wild, 
as if nature itself sought to reclaim the land from the grip of the supernatural. Village elders told stories of otherworldly lights flickering in the windows at night and of animals avoiding the grounds entirely. Some claimed to hear Annalie's voice calling out for help, while others reported feeling a sudden, unexplainable urge to flee the vicinity. The house became a place of dread, avoided by all but the most foolhardy. In the 1980s, a respected paranormal investigator named Pak Johan sought to uncover the truth. He arrived at the house under a sky heavy with storm clouds, his every step weighted with the knowledge of the darkness he might awaken. As he crossed the threshold, a palpable sense of dread enveloped him, the air thick with the remnants of past horrors. Armed with spiritual tools and rituals, Johann navigated the labyrinthine corridors, his flashlight casting long, trembling shadows. The house seemed alive, each creak and groan a testament to the restless spirits within. Deep within the heart of the mansion, Johann heard the unmistakable sound of a child's sobs, a heartbreaking melody that led him to Annalie's old room. Her spirit lingered there, trapped by a violent end, her presence a cold weight in the air. Determined to free her, Johann prepared for a ritual, his chants mingling with the whispers of the past. He meticulously set up his protective symbols, drawing upon ancient knowledge passed down through generations. The room seemed to pulse with a life of its own, shadows twisting and writhing as if resisting his presence. In the dim light of Annalie's room, Johann lit candles and began his incantations, invoking protective spirits and calling upon the forces of light to dispel the darkness. Shadows writhed and twisted, the room seeming to pulse with a malevolent life of its own. The air grew heavy with sorrow and rage, yet Johann's resolve did not waver. Hours passed, the tension mounting as the spirit's anguish peaked. With a final, powerful invocation, Johann felt the oppressive presence lift. Annalie's spirit, now at peace, slowly faded from view, her release a silent echo in the night. Exhausted but triumphant, Johann left the house, its shadows momentarily quelled. Yet the mansion remained, a dormant beast, waiting for new prey. As he departed, Johann couldn't shake the feeling that the house had not fully relinquished its grip. He knew that while Annalie's spirit had found peace, the malevolent force that had tormented her still lingered. The investigator left behind a warning, inscribed on the mansion's gate, beware the shadows within. Years later, the house lay in wait as a new family arrived, oblivious to its dark history. Booty, City, and their children Lisa and Rudy were drawn to the mansion's faded grandeur, seeing only the promise of a fresh start. They moved in with hope in their hearts, unaware of the horrors that slumbered within its walls. At first, their lives seemed idyllic. The children played in the garden, their laughter a balm to the house's old wounds. Booty and City reveled in the space and beauty of their new home, grateful for the opportunity to start anew. They began restoring the mansion, bringing life back to its decaying structure. But as days turned to weeks, the veneer of normalcy began to crack. Shadows lengthened unnaturally, and a cold, creeping dread seeped into their lives. The house seemed to exhale darkness, its sinister presence growing with each passing day. Lisa and Rudy started having nightmares, their once happy dreams now filled with images of ghostly figures and eerie whispers. Lisa, the youngest, was the first to notice. Whispers slithered through the night, growing louder with each passing day. She told her parents of the voices, of the cold hands that brushed her in the dark. They dismissed her fears, echoing the mistakes of the Van Der Meers, until the truth could no longer be ignored. Objects moved on their own, doors slammed shut with a violence that shook the house. The shadows seemed to come alive, 
mocking the family with fleeting glimpses of ghostly figures. Fear gripped them, their dream home transformed into a living nightmare. Booty and City's once strong bond began to fray under the strain, their arguments fueled by sleepless nights and unspoken fears. As the terror escalated, the family found themselves trapped in a waking nightmare. Lisa's health began to deteriorate, her once vibrant energy sapped by the relentless hauntings. Rudy became withdrawn, his eyes haunted by the things he had seen. The house's malevolent presence seemed to feed off their fear, growing stronger with each passing day. Booty and city skepticism gave way to worry, then to terror. The house, with its dark heart, demanded their submission its insidious grip tightening with each passing day. They sought help from local priests and shamans, but their efforts to cleanse the house proved futile. The mansion's dark past refused to be exorcised so easily. Desperation led Booty to contact Pak Johan once more. The seasoned investigator returned, his resolve steeled for the battle ahead. He knew the malevolence had grown stronger fed by years of unresolved rage and sorrow. Together, Johan and Budi prepared for a final cleansing ritual. The house responded with fury, the air crackling with unseen energy. Ghostly forms swirled around them, the cries of tortured spirits echoing through the halls. The house itself seemed to fight back, a beast thrashing against the light. Johan called upon every ounce of his knowledge and strength, his chants rising in a powerful crescendo. Booty, though terrified, stood by Johan's side, his determination bolstered by the need to protect his family. The struggle was intense, the house a maelstrom of dark energy. Shadows lunged at them, seeking to break their concentration and shatter their resolve. But with one final, powerful incantation, the spirit's grip was shattered. Silence fell, the oppressive presence dissipating like mist in the dawn. At dawn, peace finally returned. The spirits were laid to rest, their torment ended. Yet the family, forever scarred by their ordeal, chose to leave. The old Monado house, cleansed but still haunted by memories, remained a place of shadows. They packed their belongings and left, seeking solace in a new home far from the mansion's dark influence. The house stands silent and still, a monument to the darkness that once dwelled within. As the camera pulls away, the sun sets, casting long shadows over the dilapidated structure. The story of the old Monado house is a reminder that some horrors cannot be forgotten and some spirits will never truly rest. Today, the old Monado house remains abandoned, a silent testament to the fear that once thrived within its walls. Its tail is a chilling whisper in the wind, a reminder that the past is never truly gone and the dead never completely silent. The locals still speak of the mansion in hushed tones, its presence a dark stain on the landscape of North Sulawesi. Though the house now stands empty, its windows shattered and walls crumbling, it still exudes an aura of malevolence. Those who dare to approach its gates often find themselves overwhelmed by a sense of dread, as if the house itself remembers the horrors it has witnessed. And so, the old Monado house remains, a relic of a time when the line between the living and the dead was perilously thin a place where shadows continue to dance and whispers linger in the darkness. As the years pass, the legend of the haunted mansion grows, drawing the curious and the brave to its doors. But few dare to enter, and fewer still emerge and scathe. For the old Monado house is not just a relic of the past. It is a living, breathing entity, a vessel for the souls that have been lost within its walls. And as long as the house stands, the echoes of its tragic history will continue to haunt the land, a chilling reminder that some stories are never truly over.